Uh, my name's Nathan Munson. Okay, great. And how did you know Caitlin? We were at Butler Tech together, commercial arts. Okay, and Butler Tech is at high school? Yeah, high school, technical high school. Okay. Do you remember the first day that you ever met her? Yeah, uh, we all had to share about ourselves, and she was the big, brightest, colorful person in the room, so it's hard to forget. Yeah. Uh -huh. And what kind of personality did she have? She was always bubbly. Like, she was always outgoing and talkative and not shy of anybody. Uh, she wasn't at all scared to, you know, go up to strangers and be like, men make new friends. So that's who she always was, regardless of any situation. Yeah. And at that time, was she pretty big into art? Oh, she is art. Like, if you look up her in the dictionary, you see her picture, like, yeah. It's, she's she's a wonderful person. She All she does is talk about projects, and she would bring over, like, art pictures and, like, projects and stuff and we'd work on stuff together so yeah she was really big in the art like that's all she did she went to school for art so. wow. and then uh, the group that you guys ran with uh, were, were you guys pretty much uh, a pretty tight-knit group yeah uh, for the most part um, there were maybe I don't know 15 people in our class and uh, I'd say about eight or nine of us were pretty tight um, and I mean everyone kind of branched out but we were all together at the same time uh, but Caitlin was pretty much the center of all of that yeah Great. and did you guys do stuff uh, outside of class as well we did uh, I'd, I'd go to her house and we'd just hang out or we would uh, I've I've uh, you know gone to like parties with her or I've had her over and like we've painted pictures and painted like do some paintings together uh, not just her but also other people from my class so we, they'd all come over and we'd paint okay yeah. and uh, we also you brought over some interesting paintings was yeah. that for, what happened during that particular painting party oh that was fun um, so this happened when my dad was in Afghanistan uh, we were all talking like, hey, will your parents let us have a paint party? No. Will your parents let us have a paint party? No. I was like, well, my dad's in Afghanistan. He really doesn't have a choice. So we went and we bought plastic. And we, I always call it like our Dexter party. And, uh, that's because, I don't know if you've seen the show, but he wraps rooms in plastic. And that's what we did. We, my, entire, my dad's entire house was like from wall to wall, ceiling to floor plastic. And we literally had a paint party. Like we would throw paint at each other. That's what we did. It was fun. Uh, but I brought some of the pictures that we did, um, and I thought I just wanted to share that with you guys. Yeah. Great. And then, was there a point that, uh, as you guys were both growing up, maybe either you started dating someone or she started dating someone, did you guys grow a little apart? Yeah. Um, primarily, we were really good friends in school. Um, I mean, we obviously did hang out after school sometimes, but it wasn't like a big thing because she was in Fairfield and I was uh, more towards Cincinnati uh, and like Blue Ash. So we, you know, the distance kind of stopped us from hanging out a little bit, but over time, yeah, we kind of faded, I guess. Okay. And then did you ever get the opportunity to meet her uh, boyfriend? Yeah. Okay. What were your impressions of him? Um, I don't know. I don't have anything bad to say about the guy, to be honest. I've never seen him angry, and I've never seen him do anything that I would think would relate to the situation. Uh, we never really clicked, if you will. Uh, but, I don't know. He was he did always seem to be there for her, and I don't know. I don't really know how much to say <laughs> about him, particularly. I was her friend. You know, um, I wasn't really John's friend too much. Okay. And roughly a month before she disappeared, uh, was there, a, your mom was telling us about a cell phone oh, incident. Yeah. What's the story um, with that? We were at a house party. Um, I just, I left my phone, I guess. I, I don't remember doing this, but I guess I left my phone there. She picked it up and took it to work. Uh, after she went missing, you know, the, I didn't know this for years, but I was going through my phones, just this, like looking to see if there was any data on I wanted to save, 
And we found a video that she made that night. It's the last time I've seen her. And uh, it's very short, like five seconds. Uh, and she's just a shout out to me. I'm like Neff Smith, or I don't know what she called me, but she, you know, hi Neff Smith, I got your phone. And then that was it. That was the whole video. Uh, and then uh, I left it and my mom went and got it or something. Yeah. The days blending together when she was missing, how did you find out about that initially? Um, I don't know. I was kind of upset, obviously, you know, I was, I was very upset. So I kind of stayed out of it, to be honest. Uh, I, my mom was very involved. She was at every search, but I don't know. I just, I really didn't want to actually find her like that. I didn't want to like stumble. I didn't want to see this um, because she is my friend and I knew there were professionals out there looking for her. So they, I didn't feel like my help was actually really necessary. Um, I don't know, because that year was rough. She wasn't the only one in my life that died. <laughs> uh, I had like three people in one year, so I was pretty torn up that year. So I kind of, I didn't look to anything for any of them. I just kind of isolated myself. Yeah. Yeah. From a personal standpoint, when you started seeing her picture on posters in the community and seeing the <clears throat> news stories from a personal level, how deeply did that affect you? It was very real. Uh, I think I even made one, um, and we posted it everywhere, all over Facebook. Uh, I did what I could without going in the woods, <laughs> but other than that, uh, I mean, I, you know, I definitely gave the word out and put the poster everywhere I could possibly do it. Yeah. Throughout the course of the investigation. Did you have any opinions about the job that Fairfield Police was doing? Well, I don't have the best things to say about them <laughs> because of, I have other friends that had issues with, that mis disappeared that were from Fairfield who were later found like where they went missing and like like a week went by and Fairfield police didn't find them, but they were there where they went missing, where they were last seen. So like they didn't do a very good job. Um, but then I knew that the, I don't remember what they called Texas Exus, Exus search or something. Yeah, I, knew, Texas Exus search. They, I knew they were involved and they have great reputation. So that definitely made my mind set a little more at ease. Yeah. Okay. Um, then in those first few days as well, did you formulate in your own mind, based on what you'd been hearing, oh. did you form an opinion on what you thought might have happened to her? Well, I mean, everyone has thoughts. Uh, there were kids we went to school with that were not so stable, I guess, if you could say. So I definitely threw some names out to the police, like you need to check out these people because they were the first people to come to my mind. But I learned later on they did check them out and they weren't involved and they were clear, so... But yeah, absolutely. <laughs> there is one person in particular that was in our class with like, in our commercial art class that was very unstable. <laughs> and he uh, talked to Caden quite often, so I was like, oh man, what if that's what happened? So I definitely threw his name out there to some people. They had it. They they had it checked out. Yeah. A few months go by, and then it grows a little bit uh, beyond that. What were you thinking as the days turned to weeks on the chances that she might be found? Um, I don't know. It, it's hard. To, it's some. It's hard to think about. Um, you really kind of just wish the best. You know, there's nothing you can do about it. Um, I kind of was just hopeful and kept my, you know, kept a good thought and I don't, I don't know, I just tried really not to think about it to be honest. You said you did speak to police on occasion, yeah. uh, was it Fairfield Police? Um, I talked through, actually, what happened was when this all went down, I saw she was online on Facebook and I freaked out, I was like, what is this? So I was like who are you? Like, you know, I like, I, I like really 
went in on them and they were like, chill out, this is the cops. So I don't actually, I have no idea who I talked to, but I, so that's the moment I actually was telling them what I knew and they're like, we'll check it out. And then later on, someone messaged me from her account and said, we checked this individual out and they don't seem to be involved. Okay. Yeah. What are your memories of the day or the evening in which you found out that she had been found? I mean, obviously I was sad because um, a fantastic person in my life is, is no longer there. Um, however, for her family, they had closure and that's really the worst when someone just goes disappearing, you don't know. So I was, in one aspect, kind of happy that they got that closure, but I mean, obviously I wasn't happy for the, res the result and what happened. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you think this case will ever be solved? I would like to say yes. Uh, I would sure hope so. Um, you know, I... Will it? You know, that's... It's one thing, but I would like to say yes. Yeah. Okay. And my last question, is there anything I haven't asked you that you would like to comment or share? Oh, there's so much, but I don't know, like, you know, we were in school like eight years ago. So all these memories I have really have kind of, you know, all the, all the details. They're not so vibrant anymore. Um, but we would sit, in class, at the same desk, we'd have giant uh, sketchbooks and we'd just, you know, spend our days sketching and talking and we have a few inside jokes, uh, one about pickled clowns, that makes no sense, I'm not going to explain it, uh, but it's just some stuff that we would create in our sketchbooks um, and I don't know, no, uh, I think I like to keep a lot of it to myself, to be honest. Yeah. Okay. Well, you did a fantastic job. Thank you. You've wrapped up, so great. All right.